everyone welcome back to my channel microbiology easy notes if you like this channel please like subscribe comment and share today topic is agarose gel electrophoresis what is electrophoresis the movement of charged particles in a fluid or a gel under the influence of an electric field is called electrophoresis this technique is used for the separation of biomolecules including DNA, RNA or proteins. Electrophoresis was first observed by Russian professor Peter Ivanovich Strakov and Ferdinand Frederick Rios at Moscow University in 1807. Types of gel electrophoresis. There are basically two types of gel electrophoresis. First one is agarose gel electrophoresis. This is the most effective way to separate DNA or RNA. It can separate DNA fragments of different sizes ranging from 100 base pair to 25 kilo base pair. Second is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis which is used for the separation of proteins because the pore size of polyacrylamide gel is comparatively smaller which is appropriate for protein molecules. There are other variations of gel electrophoresis. First is paper gel electrophoresis. It is used to analyze serum and other bodily fluid. Next is pulse field gel electrophoresis. High molecular weight DNA with many megabases or entire chromosome can be separated by using this technique. Next is sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis which is also known as SDS page. It is used to calculate the protein's molecular weight and determine whether protein samples are pure or not. Next variation is 2D gel electrophoresis. It is used to analyze complicated protein mixture. It allows separation of hundreds to thousands of protein in one gel. Next is immunoelectrophoresis. It is done in two steps. First page technique is applied to separate protein antigens and then immunodiffusion technique is performed to get immune precipitates which look like arcs. Thus it is also called rocket electrophoresis. Next is Difference gel electrophoresis. To check different expressions of various proteins, this electrophoresis is performed. Generally, fluorescence dye is used in this process. Now, what is the principle behind agarose gel electrophoresis? As per the law of physics, when electric current is applied in a medium containing charged species will migrate to opposite charge, meaning positively charged species run towards negatively charged and and negatively charged species run towards the positively charged and. The speed of their movement depends on their physical properties such as mass, size and charge. Thus, movement difference led to their separation. Likewise, when electric current is applied in an agarose gel, negatively charged DNA migrates through the pores of an agarose gel towards the positively charged end of the gel. DNA is negatively charged because of the presence of phosphate group in nucleotides. Now, what are the materials required for agarose gel electrophoresis? First thing we need is agarose powder. Agarose is a component of agar. Helical molecules of agarose arranged in a supercoiled bundles held by hydrogen bonds. It has channels and pores through which molecules are able to pass. The percentage of agarose added to make a gel impacts the pore sizes. If the percentage of agarose is higher, pore size becomes small and smaller molecules able to pass through. In the molecular biology lab, 0.7 to 1% agarose gel is typically used for day-to-day -day DNA separation. This allows clear differentiation of DNA fragments sizes from 0.2 to 10 kb. It is suitable for gel electrophoresis because it has a low gelling temperature and a neutral charge and it also forms a stable gel. Next thing required for agarose gel electrophoresis is gel setting tray and plastic comb. It is a gel setting device. Melted gel is poured into this tray and before gel is cooled down, plastic comb placed in it. Comb forms well in the gel. Well is a place where DNA samples are loaded. Buffer. Tris acetate EDTA buffer or tris porate EDTA buffer, either of one, used for agarose gel electrophoresis. Buffer is used for preparation of agarose gel and also used as running buffer. It keeps buffering capacity constant throughout the process. It also helps to achieve the appropriate range of separation. Ethidium bromide. 
Ethidium bromide is an intercalating dye, binds to base pair of DNA and during the observation under UV light, it illuminates. This property of Ethidium bromide helps to observe DNA samples clearly. Gel loading dye Gel loading dye is a mix of 0.25% of bromophenol blue, 0.25% of xylene cyanol and 30% glycerol. Loading dye helps to track how far DNA samples has traveled in the gel and also allows the sample to sink into the gel. Gel tank or gel box Gel tank has different parts. First is power cable, which supplies power. Tanklet It is made up of plastic. It closes the tank after complete setup. Gel tray It is used for gel setting. Electrodes Two platinum electrodes are present, red is anode and black is cathode. Next is buffer tank. It is a plastic container with raised center. Here gel is placed. Tank is filled with buffer which allows movement of DNA samples in the presence of electric field. Preparation of the gel. To prepare agarose gel, first take appropriate mass of agarose in the flask. Now add running buffer to the agarose containing flask. Swirl it to mix. The volume of the buffer should not be greater than one-third capacity of the flask. Now melt the agarose buffer mixture in microwave. At 30 second interval, remove the flask and swirl the contents to mix well. Repeat until the agarose dissolves completely. Now add ethidium bromide to a concentration of 0.5 microgram per ml. Allow the agarose to cool for a bit. Take a gel tray. Close both sides with casting dams. Place an appropriate comb into the gel mold to create the wells. Pour the molten agarose into the gel mold. Allow the agarose to set room temperature and after 20 minutes remove the comb. Place the gel into electrophoresis unit. Now add running buffer in the tank to cover the gel surface. Now take small amount of each DNA sample on parafilm. Add gel loading dye in each DNA sample. Now slowly and carefully add DNA samples into the wells of agarose gel. In first well, add appropriate size DNA marker. It acts as reference for DNA bands. Attach the leads of the gel box to respective electrodes and turn on the power supply. Run the gel until the dye has migrated to an appropriate distance. Observation of the result. Turn off power supply. Remove the gel tray from the unit. Drain off excess buffer from the surface of the gel. Place the gel tray on paper towel to absorb any extra running buffer. Expose the gel to UV light in gel documentation system. DNA bands show up as glowing fluorescent bands. Take a picture of it. Interpretation of the results After the complete run, DNA marker opened in different bands. Each band represents different size of DNA. At the end of electrophoresis, DNA sample comes parallel to whichever band it shows its base size. For example, in this image, first DNA sample comes parallel to 200 base size of DNA marker, so its size is 200 base pair, and second sample size is 490 base pair as it almost near to 500 base pair of DNA marker. Applications of agarose gel electrophoresis Detection and purification of DNA samples for scientific purposes. To analyze DNA samples used in DNA sequencing. To evaluate the result of polymerase chain reaction. To build DNA profile. In DNA fingerprinting. And in detection of genetic variations implicated in health and illness.